Thank you, Anila. You have a data warehouse. There are data inside of this. Look, see? Now, for those that have worked on data databases, a data um, doing your queries and all that, does anyone know what normalization is? Does anyone know what normalization is? I know what normalization is. Uh, sorry, who just spoke? Jeffrey. Jeffrey, tell me what normalization yeah. is and why it's used. Uh, normalization is used to reduce um, dependencies in your um, in your database before you can before you can then talk about um, talk about um, creating the tables and inserting your data inside your tables. Right. You is have this. Uh... Is you this have to break it theoretical through. knowledge or a hands-on knowledge? Theoretical knowledge. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Right. Okay. I'll take that. Um, who else knows anything about normalization? Okay. Anyway, let's crack on. So, imagine that you have a store. And you come to my store. So let's say Aya sells. Uh, Aya is a um a shop owner. Um, uh, let's open a new one then. One sec. So I know if you if you go and read the textbook, they will tell you English stories there, which is great. Please, by all means, read your textbook. I, because of our learning, I will try to use a layman's term to bring the the explanation home to you. Okay, <clears throat> so. Jeffrey said um, um, they've done normalization because of dependencies uh, to reduce redundancies and all of those stuff. What does that actually mean? So let's say there is a little Lido or Aldi close to your house. And so this is you. You've come to buy. Um, so this is number one. Okay, whatever. You've come to buy bread. And then you've also bought, you bought um, tea, tea bags in the morning. And then you've come to buy toothpaste. Toothpaste. Okay, so today is the 12th of the 5th of 2022. Oh dear, I can't read it. Okay. Now, you've bought this. Um, Jeffrey has come to buy his pen, his books, and sock. Or socks. Or school. Okay. That same day. And then let's just say, Aya has come to buy a PC, um, some sugar, and some honey. Honey. Okay. Now think about this. Every time that you come to the store, Someone has to record something against your name. This is just like you writing. This is the same thing as writing on a piece of paper, keeping records of your items in your store. Oh, Ayo came. And we, we are so fond of... Now, there is a way we write our Dito in, in Nigeria when we're growing up. When you have to copy the same thing on the, underneath, instead of writing Ayo, you just write two lines there. One dash, dash. This... Um, um, I think I think just to show that it's higher there. But look at what's happened here. Everything here is taking space. 
Yunis, 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 Jeffrey, Jeffrey, Jeffrey. So this is these are redundant items here, right? They are redundant. They are redundant. Why are we? It's taking space every time we write them. Oh, okay. So and this is just one day, by the way, on the thirteenth. Again, Jeffrey comes again and he's bought some stuff. This time he buys bread and then he buys tea bags and then he buys whatever it is and so on and so on. Now look, we are recording this. There's bread here. There's tea bags here. Okay, pardon my spelling, okay? And so on. And Jeffrey's name is appearing here again. So let's just say Jeffrey buys an item from that store every day in a year. His name is great. And if he buys, every time he comes to that store, he buys 10 items. His name is going to appear 365 days times 10 of the items. That's 3,600 on, on the record for the same person. Just imagine you are the one writing the name every time. Doesn't make any sense, does it? Computer has made life easier for us. And this is why normalization is used to say, hang on. Look, why do we have these redundancies? Why do we have all of this, you know, repetition and stuff? This is going to create a lot of chaos for us in our data warehouse because then there's going to be duplicates and stuff. So why don't we split this and say, oh, through some means, we can have a table called names, just name. And in those names, if you're just going to have Eunice, Jeffrey, if I don't spell your name, well, please pardon me. Okay? And that's all that table is going to contain. And then maybe we'll say, oh, these tables are going to contain some IDs. So anytime you see, like, when, every, every, whenever you've gone to school, they've given you a school number. Yeah? Anytime you work for an organization, you have a unique number. So we're going to say, okay, unique number. Okay. So anytime you see a number three, that student is IO. It doesn't matter whether he registers for engineering or driving or mechanical uh, engineering course its name is number three is io then you can go here and create another table okay so well, you're going to be the products we sell so this one here would then be oh bread tea bags uh toothpaste honey and sugar okay and that's it for the product. Oh, God, I can't spell. Please, guys, just pardon my spelling. It's atrocious, isn't it? And then you say, oh, we're going to give you the product ID as well. Anytime we see bread is one, two, three, four, five, and so on. Every new product we sell has a unique identifier. Okay? So now... Uh, I didn't think I was going to start on normalization to be fair. <laughs> okay. So now, somehow, we start finding links between these two tables. Again, I don't want to go deep into this because of the people that have not known anything about this. This is not where I normally start from, but just to give you an because we're starting with um, SQL, just to give you a background. So somehow, in this table here, I can just have products here, whatever. Um, product ID, anyway. So, look, in our database, if all the if all the customers that come to our shop is just these people, right? These three people. But they come every single day, right? And they buy 10 items each. Instead of having 365 times 10 for one person, which is 3,006, and then 3,006 for the other person, and then 3,006 for the other person. Look, and then we write their names 3,006 times. Look, we've only written their names three times. And we can find a way to match this name to what they bought. So all I just need to say is, on the 12th of May, Eunice bought, Eunice name, bought a product one, Product two, product five. And I can go and say, hang on. What does product one, two, three, 
five min. Then somehow I can go and relate it to this thing right here. Oh, it means she bought bread, she means she bought tea bag, and she bought sugar, and that's it. Okay, see? I don't have to record it that many times anymore. Easy peasy. And so on and so forth. Okay, so normalization helps you to split data into different um, non depend let me see, independent. Let me not use independent, independent, but depend. So split data into different tables. Let's just say that. And then you can piece them, you can bring them together later. Okay. Now I say this, look at this. I'm going to write a little query now, right now. If I open this sales order head, right, select that. Again, don't worry, we're going to do all of this. Look, we have sales. That's the order ID. Every time you go to Amazon or whatever, you have an order ID, right? This is the date it happened. This is the day it's meant to be delivered. This is the ship date. This is the status, whatever status mean, we have no idea. But look, we have status five. However, if we go and find status here, we probably will see what status mean. Um, if status is here. Anyway, let's not waste time with that. We'll come back to that later. Now, so, okay. Sales order number again. Purchase order number, account number, oh, customer ID. Okay. Well, that means this is Eunice. Look at everything. Look at this is Eunice item. Eunice is this. This is the person that served her to number salesperson 279. Okay. Bill to address, blah, 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 blah. And this is everything that Eunice spent in our store today. Okay. But look, we don't have a full picture of this. We don't even know whether it's Eunice that has that number, customer ID or not. We have no clue. We just know that there's a record here. Look, this person spent this. So we can then say, oh, hang on. How do we know this person? We can then go and link this table and relate it to the person, the person. And this table here, this person, the person, should be able to give us who has that? So see first name, middle name. And if we find the person's number and it tallies with that person, let's see the number is. Okay, one sec, one sec. This is, let's find someone here. Sales number, customer ID 29994. Let's go back here and say, Where equal to and execute. There's nobody like that. Um, ba, 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 ba. give me one sec. <laughs> one sec, one sec, one sec, one sec. Give me one sec, please. <laughs> Okay, please just bear with me. Mm -hmm. Sales customer. Okay. Where? Customer ID. ID equal to that. Way now we found the customer ID. And now he's telling me, you see this customer ID? 
This is the person behind it. Oh, okay. Let's go and find this person. So I copy this number and then I go to the person table now. And I say, find me this person. Bring out their names. Wait. That client is called Mrs. Robin Mac, 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 whatever. Yeah, Mac, Mac. See? So we have, now when you start hearing, the more you, when, as you get into this, you hear what they call relational databases. Relational databases or relational database. So Microsoft SQL, which is the tool, we're using is a relational is a relational database. Why? Because through normalization, um, product uh, well items tables have been split into different data has been split into data different tables, but there is a relationship between all of them. I can link them together. Okay, there is a link between them. They are related. These tables, all of these tables are all related one way or the other, which when we get to the point where we're talking about joins, we use, I usually do these lessons when we get towards join. Okay, and, um, um, but for now, just let's just understand this anyway. So, Every item you buy of Amazon, every item you buy of Costco, every item you buy of Aldi, and you tap your card and you spend money, all the data goes into somewhere. Okay? It goes into a data warehouse. The data developer, the BI developer, the data engineer gets them, transforms them, and loads them into databases and different tables for you. Once they're in the tables, your job would then be to go and query them, right? Write a simple query to bring out the entire data you need. And then once you've done that, you then decide what you want to do with it. Now, which is the next step? Okay. So this is all right. Okay, let's know. There's no good functions now. That's crazy. Oh, come on. Okay, give me one sec, please. Okay, so for example, look at there's a query I'd written before for the previous class. Again, please don't worry. By the time you guys are done, you'll be able to write all of this. They were able to write all of this. Easy peasy. Okay. We'll get there. And for those who are newcomers, please don't worry. Don't worry. In no time, you will be writing codes like this. Okay? So you've written your code, whatever. You then execute it. Ooh. Okay. Okay. Give me one sec, please. Okay, so you've written your code, boom, now you've got some results. Now you take this result, and you say, what do I, what do I want to do with this result? I'm going to go and display this result because actually you see the director of Costco and Tesco, they don't care about this number one to 20. He doesn't want to see it. He doesn't want to see this. You're giving him a list. What's he going to do with list? So this is a list of 1,073. If someone gave you a list in Excel to read a list, to read items 1,073, wouldn't you think the guy is crazy? Yeah, look at this is, Someone said, oh, go on and like go and find out this data, whatever. And then you start looking at number one, number two. Oh, oh God, what is this? It's crazy, right? Okay. Anyway, your job is to make sense of this data. Right? Your job 
is to query a database. Some people want lists. Don't get me wrong. Some people want lists. Again, depending on the size of the organization. If it's an organization whereby they where they, they only have 20 clients come to them a day, 50 clients, 100 clients, you know, or let's say 30 new cases a day they're dealing with. Yeah, you can have a list of 30 items. It's great. I dare say you can even have a list of 200 items. Fantastic. Now, when you start working for multinationals, where they are having millions of records passed through per second, imagine you work for a betting company right now, okay? And Arsenal and Man United are going to play. Do you know what's going to happen in that? That the previous day before the game, millions of bets. That day before the kickoff, millions of of, de of, of bets. While the game is scoring, is playing, um, Ronaldo to score the next goal, whatever it is, people are putting their money, and it's it's ridiculous the amount of data they get. Um, no one is going to ask you to put Excel, to put your data in Excel and put a ten million records in Excel. Excel will not even accept it; it will break. No one is going to see a list of one to one million. It's crazy. Right? Okay. So, what do we expect you to see are things like this. Um, guys, give me two seconds. I need to take my mouse. I'm using my hand. Uh, one second, please. Hello? Girls, go to bed. Now, and don't make me say it again. Thank you. Apologies for the short break. And then... Um... Okay, so most of us refuse to work. Okay, still not working. Wait, no, wait. Okay, so you decide what you want to do with this data, and you go, oh, let's do a few things to it. Good night. Good night. Okay, good night. And then you go, oh, okay. Um, we don't want to see um, um, all of those items, so we can say, oh, let's break it down to this. Look, all of those items has been summarized to this. Now you can tell the director this is what we did last year. He's happy to see this. And you can say, oh, I can break it down in even further to you. Oh, right, okay. I can even break it one more further to you. Oh, fantastic. Oh, you know what, sir? I can even do something else. Let us do this. Oh, no, that's, oh, wow. Look at that. Hey, fantastic. Now look at what we've done with that little data. Right, and if I can take this away, just take this for now, look at what we've done. Now, this looks like a proper work. Any accountant is happy to look at this. Any director is happy to look at this. It's, you know, straightforward, right? Okay. Now, and this is what your work is going to be doing. It's going to be. Now, most of the people you're going to be working with, accountants, whatever they're called, whatever they're called, they can, they can work with Excel. I don't think you're the only one that can work on Excel. They can. What they can't do is this. So that's why you see some accountants who say, you know what? Just give me the list. Just give me the record. A million records. That's fine. Put it in Excel for me. And when they take it to Excel for them, 
they get to do all of these. All of this. Okay? That's your job. Now, if you work in an organization that is unfortunate to use Excel, <laughs> when I say unfortunate to use Excel, you'll be surprised how many companies still use Excel out there. Now, I say unfortunate for you because it means that you're not learning much because Excel, the world has moved past Excel. But again, there's nothing wrong in getting Excel knowledge. Excel is still relevant in this world as of today. Okay, but it's old school in the IT industry. But it's still useful. So, you know, and you just pray that your company will grow and outgrow Excel. Okay, so this is one tool where you can bring your data in. Or you can take it to something called Power BI or SSRS or Tableau. Uh, there's a few of these items out there, okay? They will do the same thing. Oh, by the way, before I even do, before I even do um, this guy here, before I do this, one sec. So before I do this, um, I can also say, you know, actually, Give me one sec, please. Sorry to interrupt. Are you, is it possible to make the spreadsheet bigger? Because I can barely see. Okay, I can do that for you. Um, give me one sec, please. Make it bigger. Yes, of course we can. This is just this is this is nothing by the way. This is not anything with this is just we're just still talking introduction today, so please don't be too alarmed or too um worried about about it. Anyway, so you see this? I'm trying to make it smaller. I can go here and go, you know what? Create something for me. Create something nice for me. Help undo stacks. Uh, shall we do stacks then? Yeah, we can do stacks, it looks okay. Okay, well, let's use this one. Let's use this one. And now it's created something for me like this. I can copy it. I can copy this. And um, from here, And come and create the dashboard with it, right? Okay, go back to that page and say, oh, I want to see something else. Uh, let's do product name. Oh, no, that's a bit too much. That's subcategory name. Even subcategory is too much. Let's do country. Fantabulous. Fantabadozy. Okay. And then say sales by. So we're doing a report already now, you see. Sales by country. Uh blah 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 blah. One second. Again, please ignore or ignore this my diagrams. It may not be perfect, but just I'm trying to paint a picture here. Okay. Um, and by the time you use your data and you start building whatever graph you want to build from any of this information here, you can take all of these away and go 
like this and take this away. Um, what else is saying? I've joined the class, man. One sec, please. Okay, um, right, let's not do this. This way, let's take this. Look. Uh, what else can I do here? Other dates, okay. So I can do this again, sales by month. And then, let me see. Uh, ba -ba 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 All right, never mind. If I do this, it's going to open. Okay, anyway. So. Let's do this again. Insert. Uh, okay. But by the time I keep going like this, whatever it is that I'm doing, trying to do and make changes to this, changing the background, in no time, you will come to something like this, which is you go on and you have Excel uh, dashboards. Okay, and you can see all of these. Everything done here is from Excel. And if you look at them, you see, look, look, look. They are not just one, it's not just like a software has created this long line and done this, no, it's Excel. So they've broken it down to this and that and that and they formatted all the sides to make it look nice. See, that's a dashboard in Excel, look at that. You wouldn't know. Okay, look at everything here is created in Excel. The organization may say, this is how we want to see it. We want to see title here, we want to see some pie charts here, we want to see this, whatever. Okay, most of the time people are not forced about how it comes out, just give them the right data, is what people are about. So this is your job. Now, again, I did say, that um, accountants and people can't, they can't do this. Nope. They can do a bit of this, pivoting and, you know, getting data out, blah, blah, blah. They don't have enough patience to do this. I've not seen an accountant that wants to do account and then is going to write an elaborate report or whatever, no. They won't do that. Okay, and that's where your job is. Uh, let's go zoom. Sorry, someone is trying to join the class. Okay, so uh, again, forget about my background here. I could change all this background to make colorful, to look colorful and catchy and whatever. Okay, so this is one tool and every organization right now, right in this world, well, most organizations are using Excel, in fact, you know, even if your company doesn't use Excel, I suggest that you still use Excel because there are some reports that you write. You want to come and mess with, him, with them on, on Excel first, it's easier to use, easier to set up and stuff like that, right? Okay, so cool, that's done. You can also use another tool, like I said, called Power BI. So Power BI is like Excel and Power Pivot and Power whatever on on um on steroid, right? You bring your data here, don't save. You bring your data, 
into the into this, and then you can start messing about with your data. See, um, so this is where your data is going to be in. You can make changes to it here. This is where the report view is going to be. You can start clicking on gauge. You can click on table. You can do a table and do a list. You can do metrics, which is going to be like a pivot. You can do maps. You can do graphs. You can do whatever on this page. Here's where you do your modeling. So exactly what you have on Excel, but the only difference is with Excel, you get to go and do a pivot and then copy and paste the diagram somewhere else, wherever. The Power BI is easier. It's, it's like the latest tool, guys. I'm sorry, I've been I've been out all day. So that's why you hear me on when you start watching your video, please just pretend as if you didn't hear that. Okay, I do apologize. Okay, so this is a picture of what your daily life would look like. Okay, you go into a query database, a query. The data, the database, you bring out the data and then you present it. That's why it's called the BI analyst. You're presenting data in a readable format. Okay. You are presenting data in a readable format. And that's where it stops. That's your job. Now, I know a lot of people have said, oh, uh, you know, um, am I going to be giving them um, um, information and telling them what to do? No, your job is not to make decisions for the organization. Your job is to say, listen, this is what your data says. This is where we are. Whatever they want to do with the organization, your job is not to advise. I want to see sales by department. Okay, that's fine. I'm going to pull out all the sales by department. I want to see sales by month. You go and pull it out. Whoever is requesting it knows what they wanted to do with it in the first place before they requested it. Okay. So, so this is a this is a full picture of what your life is going to look like. Now, having said that, is this difficult? Absolutely not. There are a few things you need to learn. Excel, one. All of us here have used Excel one way, one time or the other. Okay. Two, SQL, which is where I come in. Because we may not even do Excel now. We don't have all the time to do Excel. Three, Power BI or Tableau. I'm guessing there is a Tableau person that is going to teach you Tableau as well. Correct me if I'm wrong, Eniola. And what did you say, sir? There's someone who's going to be teaching you Tableau, right? Yes, we've done Tableau. Yes, right? yes, we've started. Yes, yeah, that's right. Tableau and Tableau. Sorry? I think we're going to be doing both. We've started Tableau already. I think someone mentioned we're going to have Power BI. Fantastic. Okay, so so you see those 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 parts, those are the end parts of it. Those are the um okay, I won't say the end part of it because again, depending on the organization, if you can go into an organization and say, listen, we don't even use SQL, we just have our data in data in 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 in, in Excel. So in that case, you just go here, get data and get it from Excel book. Okay, that's it, easy. Okay, if it's from a database, get data. You need to go to database, SQL Server. If it's from analysis services, from wherever, from different um, sources and so on. Anyway, um, so when you start doing your Tableau, please, guys, please, 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 please keep it handy. You're going to need it because that's, that's your presentation layer. The job is not complete if you can only query the tables and put it like this, it's not complete. Nobody's going to read this, it's too long. The beauty of it is when you put your reports in stuff like this. And you'll be surprised, every department needs those reports. Every manager needs those reports. So you're building several 
a report as you go along. Okay. So, having said that, for those that are new to SQL, saying, oh my God, what have I got myself into? Here is the format for writing a query. It starts with just select. Select something, I'm gonna call that something star, from the name of the database. And you can see database, these are databases, different databases. Let's say this one from that database. And if I open those database, you can see that they are stored. There's something called human resources dot department, human resources dot employee, human resources dot department history, human resources dot employee pay rise. Oh, person that address, person that this, person that that. And then you keep going, you see different production, uh, sales, and so on. Okay. Anyway, let's do sales dot sales order. Okay. Header. So now the format is this. You're going to be selecting something from from database name database name come on here database name dot schema name dot table name. What does this mean? So whenever you're writing your query, you need to specify what database you're writing from. In this case, there's AdventureWorks, there's BoomIT Trading, there's this, there's this. I specify, I want that one. Okay, so let's go and open that database. Then I look at this, you can see it starts with something dot something. You see this person dot schema, that dot person phone. The first person here before the dot is the schema. And what's the schema? Look, you're writing, you're storing data in the database. This schema is like your filing cabinet. You go to a library, you see that there is a section for fictions. So this is the library, Lambeth Library in London. When you go into it, filing cabinet for fiction, and then um, Superman jumps off the stairs and catches Cinderella, whatever. Okay, that's the name of the table. And then, so, okay, I've gone off track. Name of the database, where the table is stored, and the name of the table. And that's the format. Every query you write is going to be like that. This is the easiest programming language you ever write in your entire life. Okay? So, name of the database, name of the schema, the filing cabinet, name of the table. Now, let me break your heart. All organizations, majority of organizations, you see this schema, this schema, they don't give it a name, they just put DBO here. See? This is AdventureWorks. This is a Microsoft product. This is Microsoft test data that they've put out for the entire world. That's why you have this. That's why it's so nicely made production that this. In reality, nobody gives you the schema. They just put DBO there. DBO means database object. So when you go to your organization, you probably find something like this. We, we used to use schema at MTN anyway. Yeah, MTN is a big organization and they probably have uh, a structure for most of the, and, and yeah, which is, the, it is a standard, it's the right thing to do. It is the right thing to do. But I promise you, you go to organizations in the UK, majority of them are DBO like this. And it makes life hard. I worked for a company, they have like 22,000 tables and everything was DBO. There's no filing. 
my I almost look that was when I started getting bald. Anyway, so let me not scare you. Anyway, this is this is this is this is the format, everyone. And what this star means is this. Star means select star. Select everything you find from this table. Select everything. Star is everything you find from this table. If I run that, come on. Really? Okay, what have I done wrong? Oh no, sorry. Yeah, it's this this key my name. Yeah. Okay, let's run this. So it's going to go into the table and select every single piece of item it finds there. Look, I've made that small, which is not right. Okay, it's going to do that. And look, 31,000 records. Okay, but I don't want to see, like, for example, I don't want to see online flag. I don't want to see status. I just, I'm just interested in seeing a few things. So I'm going to say, okay, you know what? Instead of build, bringing in just those, everything, I'm going to specify the columns I want. I want sales order ID. And then I'm going to separate this column from the next column with a comma. Comma. Order date. Then the next column separated with the comma. Um, sales order number. Separate the column with the next column. Uh, customer ID. Of which I don't even need the customer ID to be fair. Okay. And what else can I get here? I don't need anything else here. So go and find me this. It's giving me that. Fantastic. Okay. What if I want to know who this customer is actually? I can then go again, guys, you don't have to write anything today. Just watch. This is me just trying to uh, tell you what we're doing here. Okay. I want to know the customers that actually bought stuff. Okay. And the others and everything they bought, whatever it is. Okay. Let me say, okay, okay. Okay. Let's go and join this. So this is a basic query, guys. Basic. And everything you're going to do from now on, you're going to have a basic query. Select from Select these items from this schema and this table. Okay, that's it. Every other thing we're gonna do after this, whether it's a stored procedure, whether it's a CT, whether it's a view, whether it's a complex thing, it is all built off the back of this. You can't write a query without this. And if you can type select and from somewhere, that's it. You can do what it, it, it's, trust me, this is the easiest language you ever write. Anyway, I'm going to join this table to another table and I'm going to stop for tonight. Left join sales.customer on, let's call this SH, and let's call this CU on SH.customer ID. Don't worry about these parts, I will explain it later. See you dot customer ID. Then I'm gonna say that still won't give me everything, right? So I'm gonna say left join person dot person. Uh, look at me. I'm I'm being a bad teacher now because I need to put that the name of the the name of the table first. Name of the database. Okay, left join, name of database, the name of the table, schema, sorry, and the name of the table. On p dot person business entity ID equal to huh, c u dot person ID. Okay, I don't need customer ID anymore. Then I can bring in suffix. First name. 
plus last name. Okay. Boom. Okay. Uh okay. So I've brought in this. Okay, this query maybe I don't know why it's giving me multiple records there. But anyway, I won't worry too much about it. Can you see what I've done? This are just basic queries. I've written a query, I've gone to one table, joined it to another table, joined it to another table to bring out a full picture of what I'm looking for. And once I'm done, I'm going to get the result out, take them to wherever I want to take them to, and that's it. Do the presentation from there. And guys, that's just a nutshell of what this job is going to look like. That is it. Is it difficult? It's not. Your job is to present good data, not duplicate like I've just done here. Because I can't be bothered because I'm I'm too busy. I'm too, I'm too tired to go and start checking the tables one after the other. But yeah, ignore me for today. Um, so basically your job is going to be doing that, querying databases, bringing it out, bringing the results out, and then displaying the results in a readable format for people. And that's it. And your job role again, let me bring it back, is called. A BI analyst or a BI direct uh, developer. Please don't use data analyst nowadays anymore. Uh, a data analyst. Now, when I used to teach this course for three months, six months, I used to say to people, after the first five weeks, and you can use Excel very well. Please go and apply for a data analyst job. But I can tell you, if you're a BI analyst, you earn much more than a data analyst. But anyway. Yeah, I'm going to stop here today, guys. Um, I'm going to ask if there's any question for today. I know you've not done anything. I'm going to be sending you messages. Um, Aniela, I hope we have a group. I'm going to be sending things yes, to Yes, we do, sir. We do have a group on tel Telegraph. So by, by Monday... By God's grace, um, we I'm going to be sending you a link to download your, your SQL Server because it normally it takes time, so that by next lesson we're all good to go and we can all start coding um, on a SQL Server. So um, I think, or you can just go online. Mm. Google. Gulu Gulu. Okay. So get SQL server. You can do that. SQL server downloads. Yeah. You can do on premises. You can do on Azure, whatever you want to do. But I'll skip it and I'll do developer. Not express, guys. Developer, download now. Okay. And then it gives you this, and you start downloading it. Okay, uh, some of you are gonna have problems with it, which is fine. Uh, we will sort it out. Okay, now when you start, when you open this, this is what's gonna come up. Basic, custom, download media. For now, guys, Please do a basic installation, everybody. Do a basic installation. Okay? Everybody do a basic installation. And then... Uh, uh, oh, my God. And then from next week, we're going to take it from there. Uh, we will upgrade it later on. But everybody... So once you click Developer Edition, this is going to pop up. Click on the Basic Edition and download it. Okay, and everybody's going to have SQL Server on the system. Once you've done that, the second thing you're then going to download is called 
SSMS. So once you've had the the server on your system, they now you now need a way to interact with it. This is SS, SSMS, this thing I'm messing about here, right? This is the page where I can interact with my server. My server is now sitting on my on my desktop, on my laptop, on my engine. However, this is the page. This is what I can use to interact with things. So again, you're gonna go here on Google, Gulu Gulu, and go get SSMS. Okay, and then you do download SQL Server Management Studio and follow the prompt. Feel free. Da, 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 da. Once you do that, you begin to see something like this on your system. Uh, and then you're ready to go. So those are the two things I'm going to leave you with tonight for you guys to do before our next class. And um, again, welcome to class. I am grateful to God that everyone who has put in their efforts um, to join my class, um, there's always been um, there's always been results by the grace of God. I know some people come in and then they decide to do um, other stuff. Uh, for example, they go, oh, right, on my way to doing this, I found another thing, and blah, 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 which is great. That's entirely up to you. But everyone that's put their mind into doing my course, uh, the last class we had, um, uh, second to the last class we had, someone got a job before we even finished, and this person had not done anything at all on this before. And they got the job. The last class I finished, in fact, I'm supposed to still talk to them today before this class came up. I was supposed to just have a little chat with them. Someone already went for an interview yesterday and um, she told me the interview went well. So she's waiting to hear from them. If you put your mind to it, guys, this is going to work. There's a lot of people needing this job out there. A lot. Loads. So, yeah, okay, right. So I am going to take a few questions now and then we're going to round it up. So, Abdul, you've raised up your hand. Any you can mm -hmm. stop recording now. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, sir, thank you. Uh, thank you, sir.